Welcome to Electrified. My name is Dylan Loomis, and in this episode, we'll cover some Tesla news. I'd like to kick off this episode with the most boring news of the day, an Elon tweet saying, quote, Boring Co. Tunnel in Vegas is only a few months from being operational, end quote. With this tweet, that could mean that by November of this year or sometime early into 2021, the Las Vegas Convention Center loop will be operational. I haven't really talked much about The Boring Company yet on this channel. If this is something that you guys are following and are into, just let me know. I can cover it more frequently. A typical trip from the Las Vegas Convention Center to Mandalay Bay during peak hours takes about 30 minutes in a car, according to LV Loop. However, this travel time would be cut down by 27 minutes using this underground system that The Boring Company is working on. I won't get too into detail in this episode, but if you're unfamiliar, I just wanted to go over a few FAQ updates on The Boring Company's website. So right here, they talk about why tunnels, reasons, unlimited capacity, minimal land use, minimal surface impact, weatherproof operation, which is a big one outside of the elements, flexible architecture, and future expansion. The biggest issue to date has been the cost of digging the tunnels, which of course they are iterating on continually driving down the costs using these TBMs or tunnel boring machines, if you see that in articles. So these vehicles can travel up to 150 miles per hour through the main artery tunnels between the stations. These AEVs will be Tesla's Model S3 and X that actually operate autonomously in these loops. There will be three types of stations, a surface station, subsurface stations, and open air stations. Generally speaking, these high volume loop systems target moving 10,000 people per hour. And in terms of cost, it will be case and location specific, but obviously the goal is to be less than comparable public transportation, according to Elon. This would of course be much preferable to regular public transportation, especially now with COVID because these loop vehicles will carry a smaller number of passengers, sometimes as low as one. So you can ride with only people that you know, which is obviously convenient. So loops versus Hyperloop, just so you know the distinction basically, Hyperloop is where people will be transported at 600 miles per hour in a vacuum sealed tunnel. This is compared to loop, which would be used for shorter intracity routes. But it's important to note that the Boring Company's current tunnels are designed and built in preparation for their eventual transition to Hyperloop. One more piece for this news item, if you take a look at this map, the solid line is the Las Vegas Convention Center that will be operational in the coming months. The dotted line is conceptual future expansions and then you have the dots which will be station locations. As you can see, this specific project is primarily to move people off the strip and more efficiently in Las Vegas. And quick fun fact, if you guys ever happen to see Elon tweeting or talking about snails like you see here, the reason is standard tunnel boring machines typically dig one mile in eight to 12 weeks, which is approximately 14 times slower than a garden snail, depending on the snail, of course. Shifting gears to some Europe EV delivery news, the market as a whole has been up in a big way over the last year. However, one major company is missing from the top of the list, and that company is Tesla. Data shows that July 2020 was a record-breaking month for EVs in Europe with volume up 131% year over year, up to 230,000 vehicles. EVs accounted for 18% of total registrations in July, which was a lot greater than the market share of 7.5% in July last year and 5.7% in the year prior. Pure BEVs, which registrations jumped from 23,000 in July 2019 to 53,000 one year later. Tesla actually posted a 76% decline to 1,050 units following shipping delays to Europe as a consequence of production challenges in Fremont. And this is something that I wanted to talk about briefly. So as we know, the Fremont factory was shut down for a few weeks this year. And one could argue that there is a type of Osborne effect going on in Europe as people await Giga Berlin to come online next year so they can have local deliveries because all of these cars being sold in Europe are from the Fremont factory. On the Tesla Motors Club, Mr. Miserable had a great post that shed some light on this shipping situation. 
He said the cars are made at the Tesla Fremont factory and then transported by road 50 miles to San Francisco Pier 80. It takes two to three days to load and then a further eight days to sail down to Panama. Usually the ships will wait at the entrance to the canal until the early hours of the morning when the eastward flow begins and eight hours later they emerge into the Caribbean for a 11 to 12 day transit to Zeebrugge, which is the main point of entry for Tesla European sales. Later, he does add Tesla previously shipped cars from Zeebrugge to Grimsby and Sheerness, but appear to have established a permanent foothold now in Southampton. I expect Southampton to be the sole port of entry for the UK from now on. So taking a look at the map, you can see Zeebrugge over here and Southampton right on the left. And as you may or may not know, typically the production cycle has been in the beginning of the quarter, Tesla makes the vehicles for the European markets because they want to deliver all the vehicles they produce in the quarter. With the three week roughly shipping time from Fremont overseas, this typically means that by the second month of the quarter toward the end, the last shipment will go out. It'll be the three weeks. And then in that last week to 10 days is the major delivery end of quarter push. If you guys want to nerd out on the delivery situation, I've included an Excel sheet below, Tesla carriers, that gives you a lot more detail. And after the fact, I am now learning that the correct pronunciation is Zeebrugge, so apologies for the earlier pronunciation. And so, yes, you may see some negative Tesla headlines with regard to European sales data for July, but bear in mind with Fremont being shut down and Giga Berlin coming online here in the coming months. Of course, most rational European consumers will wait for Giga Berlin to avoid the three week shipping and to buy these vehicles at lower costs. Yes, there is a lot more competition in this market, but once Tesla has Giga Berlin up and running, they will be operating on a more fair ground. That ground being local production. The last thing I'd like to share today is the battery efficiency chart. So I just started compiling this and I'll continue to build it out, but this is updated with the latest data for each brand and model. And yes, I do not currently have weight on here, but if there's any metrics that you guys would like to see, I will continually update this. I'll probably post it regularly and I'll put it over on Patreon as well. And what I plan to do is as some of these models like the loose Air and Rivian R1T and S actually come online and are in production, I'll continue to update these figures. But as mentioned, if there's anything else that you would like to see updated regularly, perhaps cost per mile, or if you want me to add in weight, please let me know. I'd be happy to do so. And just so everyone's on the same page, the WLTP standard is used in Europe and the conversion to EPA is divided by a 1.12 with about a 9% deviation of error. So if you ever need to convert, you just take the WLTP range divided by a 1.12 and that should give you a rough estimate of the EPA range. And one of the reason I wanted to bring this up now is the Renault Zoe is actually the best selling EV in Europe right now. And as you can see on the chart, it comes in at 4.15 miles per kilowatt hour and it has a starting price of $26,000 in France approximately. So that is indeed a very compelling vehicle. So it will be exciting to watch this market unfold once Giga Berlin is up and running. But that will wrap it up for today's episode. Please take a second to like this video if you did and consider subscribing for more Tesla content. If you'd like to support the channel further, consider checking out our Patreon where you can support us for as little as $3 a month. But either way, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you have an excellent weekend and I'll see you in the next episode.